which I have given to you and I will make the little in your hand to become much and I will make the much in your hand to become much more and I will cause your efforts to be multiplied and to be amplified by the breath of my spirit upon that which I have given to you to do and I will cause my abundance to rest upon you and to manifest in your life and in all that you do by reason of the abundance of my blessing that I pour upon your life for even from now forward you will see the proof of my blessing upon your life upon your family and upon all that you do blessed be the name of the Lord lift up your voices and bless the name of the Lord thank you my father thank you my father please have your seat in the presence of God hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah I welcome us all to our month of family emphasis praise the Lord every August of every year is our month of family emphasis and what do we do in the month of August we focus on our families we give teachings and preachings that are, are relevant to our family lives we pray we intercede we prophesy over families we anoint we impart families we have um, singles seminars we have uh, married seminars as necessary and we have couples dinner and uh, we have children's celebration we have youth sunday and all of that in that one month this month is going to be a very uh, busy and active month for us as every member of the family unit the father the mother the parents the children the youth everyone would have something to do in the house of god and i believe god strongly that this month as we give attention to our families the glory of god will come upon our families and the light of god will shine upon our families and great and marvelous things will begin to manifest in our families like never before in the name of the lord jesus christ and just like in the case of obedidom in the bible uh, that the ark of god rested in his house for three months and at the end of the three months the bible says and god blessed obedidom and all his house so much that the news of the blessing spread to the palace of the king i'm believing god that this month as the presence and the glory of god will rest upon our families the blessing of the lord will become manifest in our families and there will be so much that the news of it will spread far and near in the name of the lord jesus christ and i pray specially for your family that your family will experience the presence the power and the blessing of the lord like you've never known before in the name of the lord jesus i see the blessing of the lord coming upon your family so much that your family will not only be blessed but your family will also become a blessing in the name of the lord jesus can i hear your louder amen, amen. your family will not only be blessed but your family will become a blessing i want you to quickly pray for your family and say lord this month let your blessing rest upon my family so much that we will not just be blessed but we will be a blessing all the days of our lives pray that prayer for your family and receive the blessing of the lord upon your family lord i receive your blessing upon every family represented in this place 
in the name of the lord jesus christ i receive the fullness the fullness of your blessing upon us in this place like we've never received in the name of the lord jesus i speak the blessing of your goodness upon everyone family represented in this commission go ahead pray every good thing possible over your family spiritual blessings health blessings financial blessings material blessings all manner of blessings go ahead and speak all these dimensions of blessings over your family lord i bless our families with every kind of blessing that every family in this commission needs i speak peace and unity into our families i speak god's prosperity into our families i speak healing to the ones that are sick i command breakthroughs for the ones that need breakthroughs i speak fruitfulness where there is a need of fruitfulness i speak the blessing of the lord that makes rich and he added no sorrow upon every member of each family that is represented in this commission i cancel every evil against families in this place every curse every enchantment every divination every manipulation of the enemy against families in this place we cancel them in the name of the lord jesus and let's go ahead and plead the blood of jesus upon our families we plead the blood of jesus upon our families upon all our family members wherever they might be those around us those far away in other uh, regions of the nation and those abroad let's go ahead and plead the blood of jesus christ upon them the bible says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony we are overcoming every form of evil and every form of wickedness against our families against our family members we overcome them by the blood of the lamb we overcome them by the word of our testimony and let's finally begin to declare over our families arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon our families for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon us and the glory of the lord shall be seen upon us gentiles will come to our light kings will come to the brightness of the rising of our families no single member of our family will be left down everyone is rising everyone is shining for our light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon us blessed be god in the highest in jesus name we pray praise the lord hallelujah today as uh, we open up the month for with a focus on family emphasis i'm going to be bringing to us a teaching that first and foremost borders on individuals in the family because a family is made up of individuals a man marries a woman and then they begin to have children and so the family uh, consists of individual persons and the state of life of each of the individuals determines the state of the family the extent to which each member of the family knows god relates with god and becomes the best of himself or herself overflows to what becomes of the family as a whole if the individuals can become excellent and productive and loving the same will overflow to the family and you will find these good traits 
in the good things that happens in the life of each of the individual you will find it happening in the family so the teaching of today is going to be focusing on our individual lives our spiritual lives as individuals um, with a more direct connection with the almighty god how we get to relate with god how we get to connect with god which in the overall will overflow to every other member of the family i'll be speaking today on the topic how to fellowship with and hear god how to fellowship with and hear god there is a scripture that was read earlier on jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 the person who led the prayers for the church referred to that scripture and i was um, really blessed by that scripture jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 it says and i will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding when she read that scripture the lord spoke to me and said son that is the responsibility of pastors to feed the people with knowledge and understanding the bible says with all you're getting according to proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 with all you're getting get understanding whatever else you are getting in the world whatever materials whatever virtue you are getting make sure according to proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 make sure that you get understanding and this is because understanding is the wellspring of life what you do not understand you cannot excel in so the responsibility of uh, pastors is to teach the people knowledge and get them to understand so that they can live their lives like god wants them to live and so that they can fulfill their destinies as have been predestinated by god and that is what we are doing today that's what i'm doing today i'm going to give you an understanding of how to fellowship with god and how to hear god it is very important for every believer to learn how to fellowship with god and hear god according to john chapter 10 verse 27 jesus said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice so according to jesus every believer is supposed to hear the voice of god in fact let me put it more directly every believer hears the voice of god now that might not seem true in the life of so many believers but according to scriptures the sheep of jesus christ hears the voice of jesus so it doesn't matter your current experience of not hearing the voice of jesus i would rather stick to what jesus has said in scripture that you hear his voice than receive what you say that you do not hear the voice of jesus i believe the problem for a lot of believers is not that they are not hearing the voice of jesus but they do not understand that it is the voice of jesus so your problem is not that you are not hearing your problem is that you do not understand that this is the voice of jesus a case in point is that of samuel that was sleeping by the ark of covenant in the temple and the voice of the lord called him by name he heard the voice 
but he did not understand that it was the voice of the Lord so his problem was not that he was not hearing the voice it was that he did not understand that this was the voice of God three times the voice came calling his name and three times he ran to Eli and finally Eli understood that this was God calling Samuel and what did Eli do Eli gave him understanding so what I want to do for you today is to give you understanding and said to him the next time you hear him calling your name say to him speak Lord for your servant hear it all right let me say to you exactly what Eli said to Samuel and then you will say it also the next time you hear the Lord calling you what should you say speak Lord for your servant hear it I want you to say speak Lord for your servant hear it okay close your eyes and imagine God calling your name and then say it one more time one to go speak Lord for your servant hear it praise the name of the Lord I believe God strongly that beginning from today you will hear the voice of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and when Samuel did that God spoke to him he heard it loud and clear he understood the things that God was saying and from then onward Samuel began to hear the voice of God the Bible says from Dan to Beersheba they heard the voice and the prophecies of Samuel and not one word that Samuel prophesied fell to the ground but this was the same Samuel that God called three times and he did not hear so he might have been calling you 300 times and you've not heard and you've not understood but don't worry even prophet Samuel once experienced it but later on he got to understand the voice of God so beginning from now you will get to understand the voice of God how many of us have ever heard your name being called and you ask everybody and nobody was calling your name oh so many people God has been talking to you praise the name of the Lord and then you look around and nobody that's the voice of God so the next time you hear that call what should you say for thy servant hear it praise the name of the Lord and I assure you he will speak because the reason why God calls your name is because he wants to tell you something when your father calls your name what does he want to do he is drawing your attention so that he can say what he wants to say because if he does not call you before he says it and he has four children all the four children will be confused they don't know who he's talking to particularly so the reason why God calls your name is so that you can know that oh I am the one he wants to say something to I learned it with my children that I need to be very specific and call the name of the person I'm talking to if I say get me the key I'm gonna cause problem because all three of them would want to get the key and then they will start crying and shouting I'm the one that daddy was talking to I'm the one he sent last time it is my turn to go now and what caused the problem I didn't call a name I didn't say you bring me the key so I've learned over time whatever I want to say I call the name first I get the person's attention and then I say what I want to say God calling your name simply means he wants to get your attention I pray for you that you'll be sensitive to give God attention in the name of the Lord Jesus all right can I hear you say God knows my name if he does not know your name he will not call your name some of your names are hard to pronounce but check it out each of those times God pronounces it perfectly can you clap for God glory be to God hallelujah so we must learn to hear the voice of God but then importantly before we can get to know and understand the voice of God we need to first learn how to fellowship with God because it takes fellowshipping with God on a consistent basis to be able to hear the voice of God on a consistent basis so today I'm going to give us several points 
about how to fellowship with God and hear the voice of God and once you begin to fellowship with God and hear the voice of God it is going to positively impact your family as a whole because you will know what God wants you to do per time you will know what God is up to you will know what God wants to stop and what God wants to activate in your family and you will be able to act accordingly so I'm gonna give us about um, seven points on how to fellowship with God and hear the voice of God number one in order for you to fellowship with God and hear the voice of God on a consistent basis number one thing you do is to set an appointment with God set an appointment with God what do I mean by that for you to on a consistent basis fellowship with God and hear his voice you must on a daily basis you must have a set appointed time an appointment with God at a particular time every day now for some people or most people in Christendom we call it quiet time and a lot of people do it in the morning maybe they wake up 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 4 a.m. they have that quiet time period with God unfortunately however what makes our quiet time not to be as effective and productive one of the things that makes it not to be as effective and productive as it ought to be is because you don't have a set time for it you do it 3 a.m today you have it 4 30 tomorrow and then you have it 5 a.m next tomorrow and then the other day you did it 3 30 a.m this robs you of effectiveness in fellowship with god you must have a fixed time that god knows that once i appear there she's going to be there at that time of the day such that you also come to know that once i appear there at this fixed time god is going to be there now look at adam for example when did the bible say that god visited adam in the cool of the evening it was a set time it was not in the morning it was not when the sun was hot there was a set time that god knew that he could meet with adam adam was going to be there at that time every day and god was going to be there at that time every day you must have a set time that you meet with god the question then is must it be in the morning no it must not be in the morning this has to do with your schedule you need to check your schedule we all have different schedules some of us are busier than others some of us have activities that we do that carry us late into the night and that might make it almost impossible for us to have morning quiet time the key in this is that you should have a time no matter what time of the day it is yours might be in the afternoon because the night time is busy for you you wake up early in the morning and the first thing you need to do is to rush to cook for the children and to do all of that so you can't really have a good time enough sufficient time with God in the morning and so you can fix an afternoon time and it must be a fixed time it can be 12 it can be 1 it can be whatever time it is for some people what you might do is to make sure you finish whatever you're doing in the morning early enough and leave earlier than usual to your workplace you know that people come late to work work time is 8 a.m you might plan to arrive work by 7 and you can sit in your office alone you can sit in the staff room alone and have your quiet time what matters is that you've meet with God at that time 
you might have to go to the backside to the bush behind the school and have your quiet time with God I know of a man what he does is that he leaves home early and he goes to a particular restaurant every day 7 a.m. he's there he plugs in his earpiece in his ear he has a corner he sits he gets his coffee and then he has his time with God 7 a.m. will always meet him there angels will always meet him there God will always meet him there and the restaurant they've got to know that this man he uses that place for his quiet time he sit down with his um, iPad and then he's meditating within 30 minutes to one hour he's done he gets up and he leaves this has become a consistent thing for him that impacts his life positively so the first thing is that you must have an appointment time with God. It's the same time on Monday. It's the same time on Tuesday. Walk it into your schedule. For some people, it might be night time after everybody has gone to bed. And so 12 midnight, you have your time with God. 12 to 1. Whether you prayed it in the morning or you prayed it in the afternoon or you prayed it in the night does not really matter. You see, time only exists within our sphere God lives outside of time are you following me God lives outside of time we are the ones that have time frames so when you pray in the morning you pray in the afternoon or you pray in the evening it does not really matter although there are other set times for prayer like midnight prayers and all of that I'm not talking about all those other midnight prayers who have teachings on that at other times they are good it's good you have some midnight prayer time and the rest of them but this one I'm particularly talking about your time of fellowship with God which everybody should have and it can be any time of the day what matters is that it is a quiet time where you can be with your God alone for mothers who prepare children to go to school and the rest of them and you have your own business or the other the best time for you might be maybe nine o'clock in the morning after you've discharged the crew plus your husband and the children you shoot them out and now you are you have the house all to yourself and then you fix that time and say praise the Lord they are finally gone and then you can sit down and have your quiet time with God now the question the other question should be how long should it be well the how long is also dependent on your schedule it might be one hour for me it might be 30 minutes for you but at least make it up to 30 minutes up to 30 minutes at least because you can hardly accomplish much in 15 minutes you can hardly accomplish much in 20 minutes so it should in my opinion it should be at least 30 minutes with God it can be one hour it can be more but you should have at least 30 minutes with God and I'm going to give you a breakdown of what you are supposed to do within that period but importantly make sure you have that set time in Jamaica knows you are going to be there at that time in your Gabriel knows you're gonna be there at that time Jesus knows you're gonna be there at that time praise the name of the Lord so we have examples in scriptures we might not have the time to read all the scriptures first Kings chapter 19 verse 1 this was when Elijah encountered um, God and heard the still small voice he, he went he traveled to the place and had an appointed time with God there we have Exodus chapter 19 from verse 10 God told the children of Israel to separate themselves sanctify themselves for three days and then come and meet with him and have an appointment with him praise the name of the Lord number two you must have a specific place for meeting with him one is a set time number two is a specific place don't let it be in the bedroom today and in the toilet tomorrow and in the office next tomorrow and in the restaurant the other day and at the church the fifth day no try to work it out to be a place one place once it's that time god is going to be in that place waiting for you or you are going to be in that place waiting for god so have a set time and have a set place the set place might be a corner by your bedside 
Once it is time, God is going to meet you kneeling down there. Or God is going to meet you sitting down there. It might be your table in your office. That is your set place. It might be your desk in your workplace. It might be under that juniper tree or mango tree in your workplace where you go very early in the morning and you just go and sit under that tree and then have a time with God. So the first one is that have a set time, a fixed time every day. It might look impossible to do, but when you give it a try, you will see that it works and then you will get so um, thrilled by it that you will continue to work it out. So you have the set time and then you have a set place God deals with places you remember the story of Jacob as he was traveling running from his brother to go and meet his uncle he lighted upon a place when he got to that place he could not but have an encounter in that place he put his head on a stone and he had a dream he saw the ladder uh, descending from touching heaven and touching earth and he had an amazing encounter with God the peculiar thing about that place is that that was also the place where Abraham was to sacrifice his son unto God and God provided a ram in replacement it was on the same mountain on the same place where Jacob had the encounter with God and it was that same place that Solomon King Solomon years later finally built the temple this tells us that God is interested not just in the set time but also in the particular place and what happens when you have a particular place with God is that that place becomes a portal of connection with God that place becomes a place where you don't struggle to connect with God immediately you step into that place that place is already charged that place is already an atmosphere of relationship with God so anytime and in fact take note of it in fact even when it is not time maybe you normally your time is 7 a.m to go there even when it is not 7 a.m and you have something you need to address with god something you need to pray about that you need god to attend to if you take it to that place you are going to find that you have easy connection in that place to receive answers with god because you are built an atmosphere in that place that allows the presence of god to manifest speedily you don't have to begin to walk up the presence of god it's already in that place so have a set time and have a set place praise the name of the lord now when you get to the place what do you do do you go there and lie down and sleep do you go there and dance what do you do you have a set time you have a set place what you should do is that that's number three now what you should do is that you should be still be still and be quiet in the presence of god the bible says be still and know that i am god how do you know he is god you need to be still you need to be quiet you need to calm yourself down look at psalm uh, chapter 23 verse 2 from verse 1 says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters why will he lead you beside the still waters because he just wants you to have this quietness in your spirit that will allow you to know him as God we also have Psalm chapter 46 verse 10 Psalm chapter 46 verse 10 it says be still and know that I am God I will be exalted among the hidden I will be exalted in the earth man can be a very busy creature not just physically but in your heart and in your mind you always have things to do things to analyze things to calculate and oftentimes when you step into the place of prayer you come in with all those things in your heart you come in with all those ideas of what to do and what you should do first is to calm down and be still and clear your mind of those things so that you can focus on God and one thing that can aid you to be able to accomplish that is for you to play worship songs soft 
worship songs not the high life uh, warrior and high praise songs yet if you're trying to calm down you're gonna play a soft song so for me I have some specific songs that I love to repeat those are the songs I use for my quiet time I plug in my earpiece and then I close my eyes and then the worship song is playing and I'm listening to the worship song and uh, I do something also so alongside with being still and worshiping you are also to meditate all those three go together as you are still in his presence you listen to the worship song you don't have to sing along just you can sing along in your mind and then you meditate what do you meditate on you meditate on the goodness of God you meditate on the miracles of God in your life you can meditate on uh, any scripture that comes to your mind you just dwell on the scripture the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want oh because the Lord is my shepherd it means all my needs are met I will not lack any good thing what a wonderful shepherd I have the good shepherd laid lays down his life for the sheep so my shepherd died for me that means nothing in my life is gonna die what a wonderful shepherd and then you worship him and where the song has lyrics for me i prefer worship that does not have lyrics uh, because if it has lyrics i'm gonna be forced to concentrate on what the song is saying so once in a while i listen to the ones that have lyrics and i just concentrate on the song and worship based on the lyrics but you should also have varieties you have some that are strings that you just will allow you to concentrate on what the spirit tears in your heart rather than being forced to listen to the lyrics of the song i have a particular one that it only has like it will it will uh, play strings and instrument for a long while and then at a point it will just say one word after that one word repeated twice it will continue with strings and worship and towards the end it will say another word and say it like twice i like that one because it just allows me to just worship and when it gets to where it says those words i can concentrate on those words and just meditate on them so be still worship meditate Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein and then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success so meditate on the word of God in your quiet time and what happens with worshiping is that worship brings the presence of God enter his gates with thanksgiving enter his courts with praise such worship in stillness in the presence of god and meditation allows you to be able to concentrate on god now for those of us who have very active minds like somebody like me my mind is always very active i always have things to think of things i need to do list of things i need to accomplish um, this often interferes with our quiet time because you sit down and then your mind is calculating what to do in the office and when you get back home how you will handle the children and how you're going to go make the payment you already have like a list of 1000 things you need to do for the day and interestingly you will find out that those things will always come to you when you want to do your quiet time how many of you have observed that they just keep coming to your mind and so you are having quiet time but you are also having planning time you are having both of them you're already planning and you're having quiet time and it's also confusing now how do you handle those thoughts what you should do is to have a pen and paper maybe once just before that time when you're to have your quiet time maybe 10 15 minutes before write out everything that is coming to your mind i need to visit sister uh, janet you write it down i need to pay uh, for this bill i need to do this i need to go to this place after this as they come write them down i have found out that if i can write them down they leave my mind immediately because 
it is sure that any time i need to do them i can go back to the paper and find out exactly what i'm supposed to do so download what is in your mind on a paper and keep it aside you will find out that your mind will be clear to be able to concentrate and focus on your quiet time praise the name of the lord number what now i've mixed up a lot in number number three number five number four all right whichever it is for you just flow with it because i've added several things so just um, write it as you desire and uh, you say is number one number five and number four and number clap for yourselves so just flow as you please praise the name of the lord hallelujah all right so i will stop giving numbers so that uh, we can all give our own numbers praise the name of the lord so the next one is that you pray pray after you are still and you worship and you meditate the next thing you are to do is to pray so the key question is what do i pray about what am i to pray about i'm to pray well the answer is simple pray about anything that is in your mind is that simple very simple pray about anything that is in your mind anything that is bothering you anything that you need an answer to anything that you need a solution to pray about it what is prayer prayer is an art of casting your cares upon god that's what prayer is about apart from the worshiping aspect and praising him it is an opportunity for you to cast your cares upon god so pray about what is in your heart what is troubling you what is your challenge uh first peter chapter 5 verse 7 says casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you so you might want to pray for your wife you might want to pray concerning uh, the car you need to buy you might want to pray concerning your children you might want to pray concerning the church and the rest of them so pray what is in your heart and that will also be dependent on how much time you have for your quiet time you're going to allot specific times uh there will be the time for being still and worshiping maybe 10 15 minutes for example let's say you have one hour for the um fellowship with god you might have 10 minutes for being still and worshiping god and of course it might change sometimes the holy spirit might intervene and uh we just get you to just worship all through but then for most of the times you'll be able to follow your schedule of worshiping and being still and then praying whatever is in your heart to pray unto god and when you are praying be practical don't be spiritual and uh, position your neck one way and uh, do it the other way no 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 just talk to god because you are communicating with a being he's living he's alive he cares for you and he wants to hear you you don't need to form the words like you hear pastor use the words in church no speak the way you speak best to him tell him what the challenge is tell him how, what your desire is concerning it and then always remember to tell him that his will should prevail this is what i want but lord let your will be done uh, in the lord's prayer it is said thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so when you have prayed all of the prayers learn to always say lord your will be done i surrender to your will praise the name of the lord so after you have prayed what next should you do pick up your bible and read pick up your bible and read the bible says in second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth the next question is where do i read glory to god 
the answer to that is read anywhere anywhere old testament new testament genesis revelation you can randomly open anywhere and read and expect god to bless you to speak to you from that verse of scripture if you open to a place and you don't seem to catch anything from there open to another place and get something from the lord many people miss out of receiving from god in their quiet time uh, by wanting to have a well lined up scriptural reading pattern it's good i do it like in church we have um we read four chapters every week two from the old testament and two from the new testament now the mistake many people do is that they use those chapters for their quiet time that shouldn't be your quiet time that should be for your study time that should be for your separate bible study time because if you want to read four chapters in your quiet time you will only read you will not worship you will not be still you will not have time for any other thing because some of those four chapters can take you three hours to cover so um, my study time is not in my quiet time my bible reading in my quiet time is to hear from god is to receive from god so oftentimes what i need is one verse or two verses or three verses that relates together within the time frame of the quiet time so read any place in the bible open up randomly this is not to stop you from having your study time where you can fully study the bible chapter upon chapter line upon line you need to have a separate time for that the next thing after reading the next thing to do what number is that for you number six number number seven number five all right just keep at it glory be to god <laughs> hallelujah so the next thing to do is to listen and write listen and write so remember you must always have your jota with you in order for you to write have your writing material with you now this is really where we get to hear God remember it is about how to fellowship with God and hear God because the essence of fellowship is to hear praise the Lord hallelujah so listen to this carefully because this will help you to understand how God speaks after you have set out time worshiping meditating praying studying the scriptures what you should do is pick up your pen and listen to your thoughts what you listen to is your thoughts god will begin to drop thoughts in your head he will give you divinely inspired thoughts on how to attend to the matters you have presented to him in prayer or he will give you thoughts on the bible verse you have read so it can go in in any of those two ways for me when i read the bible maybe i read a verse of scriptures um let's say for example i studied psalm chapter 46 verse 4 it says there is a river and the streams whereof shall make glad the city of god the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high verse 5 says god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her and that right early so after i have read those two verses of scripture I take my pen and I listen what I do oftentimes is I begin to interpret that Bible verse thoughts will begin to come oh God says he will help me and a lot of times you will find out that God will give you scriptures 
that will refer to what you have prayed about it might not be every time but oftentimes the scripture he will lead you to will address what you have prayed about maybe i prayed for one need or the other and then i read this verse that says god shall help me what do i do i write down god is saying to me that he will help me concerning the 16 bedroom duplex that i want to build he says he will help me on time now those are thoughts coming based on the bible verse i have read and i'm telling you that is the voice of god many do not know that god speaks to them through their thoughts but god does he speaks to you through your thoughts so write down what you think god is saying to you now if you are not confident that it is god speaking to you you can write it this way i think god is telling me right so <laughs> amen i think god is telling me that he will help me concerning my visa to trinidad and tobago which i have prayed to him about and he says he will help me early you can check it up in the bible and right he says he will help me early now watch it you are going to find out that as you go about the day god is going to give you proofs that he gave you that scripture he can either send somebody to say something related to that scripture to you or you might find a sticker on a car that just says my help is from the lord and then that will serve as a confirmation from you that actually god spoke to you through that scripture now aside from it being from the scriptures when you pick up your pen to write it can simply be that god will begin to bring thoughts into your mind that wow there is no restaurant all around the area where i am living if i can start a restaurant there and i know how to cook i cook better than sister titi and uh, so i i think i should start a restaurant what name will i call it okay come and chop restaurant international come and chop okay and uh, <laughs> praise the name of the lord listen to me immediately you say what name do i give it god will drop a thought in your mind he will give you a name in your mind you will think you are the superman that is thinking of the thing but it is god that is giving you the right name to use for the restaurant praise the name of the lord and then aside from when you have finished your quiet time and you get up and begin to move around because you have spent time with god praying and wanting to know what he does not give you at that moment he will give you in the course of the day you just be going the thought will just come oh i think i should use this name for that restaurant oh i think this is what i should do you would think it's your thought but i want you to know from today that it's not your thought oh yes there are parts that are your thought but then god speaks to you through your thoughts the bible says it is god that worketh in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure so how does he work in us he works in us with our thoughts he puts desires in your heart to will he puts desires he makes you to think about it and then he empowers you to do it so i want you to begin to pay attention to your thoughts listen and write down what god says to you some people for them when they receive most is in the bedroom are there some people here like that once they enter the bedroom to shower that's when the thing begins to come to their mind can i see your hand ah we have a lot of them here so when you have spent time with god he can either drop those thoughts right there or later on or for you if it is the bedroom just have a i don't know what kind of writing material you will have in the bedroom that will not be soaked <laughs> praise the name of the lord 
I, I know of a minister. He, he said often time he has to run out of the bedroom and quickly write something down. And then the wife he said, "What is it?" He said, "Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry." And then and then he goes back to the bedroom to receive some more. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So pay attention to your mind, especially when you have spent time praying over something. Pay attention to your thoughts especially when you have spent time praying over something psalm chapter 45 verse 1 uh, talks about the pen of a ready writer i like a particular translation of the bible that the way it puts a particular line the message translation it says that the words i mean the thoughts are shaped into words uh, let's read um, psalm chapter 45 verse 1 psalm chapter 45 verse 1 my heart is indicting a good matter where is it happening in your heart and what goes on in your heart thoughts that is my my thoughts of a good matter are coming up in my heart do you see it when you've been praying over something thoughts of a good matter begin to come up in your heart i speak of things which i have made touching the king my tongue is the pen of a ready right lady a ready writer the uh, message translation says the things i am receiving in my mind are shaped into words so you catch them in your mind and you write them down you need to learn to capture your thoughts capture the thoughts and put them in writing in habakkuk it says uh, chapter 2 verse 2 write the vision make it plain for it is for an appointed time though it tarry wait for it for it shall not tarry it will come to pass praise the name of the lord the best way that i know to hear god after praying is to sit down and write try it you will know what i'm saying the best way right the best way to hear god after praying concerning any matter is to sit down and think and write what you think that god is saying to you or write what you know that god is saying to you that is how god speaks to his people for me a lot of times when i go for my protracted retreats uh, like maybe I'm having a three-day retreat locked up in a hotel praying and calling upon the name of the Lord what I do within those periods is that I spend a lot of time praying in tongues I can go three hours praying in tongues praying in tongues one hour two hours I'm praying in tongues three hours I'm praying in tongues and then I take up my Bible and I study I study I go beyond one verse since I have the whole three days with me I study and study and after I have prayed and study what do I do I take up my pen and my paper and I begin to write the plan of God for the next year let's say for example uh, when I go for my retreats to prepare for the next year what will be the theme of the next year uh, what is the plan of God for the ministry for the next year after I have spent time praying and studying I take up my pen and I'm like so what does the Lord have for us for the next year thoughts will begin to come about the theme of the next year and I will write it down I might need to adjust it later to to match very well but then i've gotten the main idea of what the theme of the year should be and then i begin to write down things and write down things and all the time i find out that it turns out to be exactly what god is saying to me because somebody is going to call to confirm a coincidence is going to happen to show that wow everything you wrote down was actually the plan of god for your life praise the name of the lord are you blessed by that does that help you praise the name of the lord number what now all right let's leave the number praise the name of the lord the next thing you do is to act on what you have received act on what you have received james chapter 1 verse 22 James chapter 1 
verse 22 be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self so after you have heard from god what do you do obey him act on what he has said to you he can speak to you in your quiet time that you've not been caring enough for your husband or your children or he can speak to you and just lay on your heart that there's a particular brother you've not really been giving attention to what should you do call him up speak to him encourage him and when you come out of your quiet time because you've spent time with God you become an agent of God because God is always looking for people he can speak through to bless the needy to touch the lives of people so when you come out of your quiet time every day know you are a witness unto God and God can give you a word of encouragement for a brother you might just meet a brother and a scripture will pop up in your heart be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication be bold enough to tell that brother that this scripture is coming to my heart for you i don't know whether it's making sense to you be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication let your request be made known to god and i tell you the brother or the sister will say my god that is just the scripture i need because i've been troubled i've been worried concerning my finances or concerning my marriage i remember those years when i was praying to hear the voice of god i couldn't hear jack and i was living with a friend who was always hearing the voice of god you know it can be very very tough when you are not hearing and then you are staying with somebody that hears continually and um, at least if you stay with people that are not hearing uh, you can manage that okay me i'm not hearing they are not hearing we are the same but this one when I wake up, the Lord said. When I come back, the Lord said. Before we sleep, the Lord said. I'm like, God, this is punishment. Uh, this guy is always hearing God. Praise the name of the Lord. So I began to pray. I said, God, I want to hear you. And so what I would do back then is that I would just close my eyes and be very quiet and quiet expecting the voice of God to just come through the window or somewhere and that the only thing I used to hear then was the ticking of the clock once I go very quiet I'll just be hearing the clock tick 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 I said that's not the voice of God that's the clock <laughs> praise the name of the Lord <laughs> hallelujah because I did not understand how to hear the voice of God so I'll tell my friend and unfortunately that my friend did not know how to teach me to hear the voice of God you know there are lecturers who don't know how to teach they know it but they don't know how to teach you they confuse the students but they know it how many of you have seen such lecturers before aha uh -huh. so that was the case with my friend he was hearing God but he didn't know how to teach me to hear God and so it was a problem so I prayed and prayed until one day God decided to show me that I am hearing his voice but I just don't understand that I'm hearing his voice you remember at the beginning Samuel heard his voice but Samuel did not understand that it was his voice and that's the case with every believer some of you know times when something was to happen and something came to your mind don't enter that bike don't climb that bike and then you climbed it and then uh, something happened on the one you said ah, and something was telling me not to climb that bike now that something is the voice of god it's not a something it's the voice of god so start paying attention to it and you will get used to it so one day this my friend went for prayer with another colleague and they spent all night praying and i i was sleeping at home then in the morning when he came back and slept i went out and i ran into his prayer partner and then a scripture just came up in my mind and i said sir i think you should meditate on this scripture it just came to my mind that i should tell you uh, when i saw you this scripture came up on my mind and i quoted the scripture for him and the way he looked at me i didn't understand and then he left then later in the day my friend met me and said i thought you said you don't hear god i said what do you mean he said the scripture god gave us when we were praying 
that is the scripture you came and gave my partner when you woke up in the morning and then i said oh so that is the voice of god ah uh, me too i hear god now praise the name of the lord <laughs> hallelujah so start paying attention to those and when you pay attention to them more and more it will get better it will get better and better and better somebody clap for jesus hallelujah so act on what you have received begin to take steps whatever he tells you once you begin to act on what you have received god will give you more because he knows that ah this one always acts on whatever he has received if he says if where you studied and he spoke to you says forgive and you wake up and you forgive the person that has offended you tomorrow he will be eager to speak to you again some of you he has been speaking to you since 1999 to forgive that sister and you keep saying lord when we get to heaven we will settle that matter before the courts of heaven all right let's see whether you will get there praise the name of the lord hallelujah number next one number next one right uh, <laughs> okay number 10 right what's your own number eight number eight number nine all right let's do it number next one praise the name of the lord the next one is repeat the process that is do it every day have a time with God as a specific time at a specific place every day repeat the process meditate hear from God tell somebody what God tells you to tell the person and the person will be blessed and finally expect confirmation and manifestation expect confirmations and manifestations what does that mean after you have finished as you go about your daily activities expect that god will confirm what he has told you in your quiet time and expect that what he has promised you will manifest in your life the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short you can read up proverbs chapter 23 verse 17 and 18 and proverbs chapter 10 verse 24 the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short so look out for confirmations and look out for evidence because god will always show up the bible says call unto me and i will answer and i will show you great and mighty things which you have not known this is how to fellowship with God and hear the voice of God. Two questions for you. Do you have a place for hearing God? And do you have a time for hearing God? Rise upon your feet. The ancient word ever true. Thank you, Jesus. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Hallelujah. Oh, let the ancient words be now you take that song quietly what i want you to do is if you've not been having time for god you can just say lord have mercy on me i'm sorry i've not been having time for you i receive grace to set out time for you daily you can even pray to him and say lord show me where is the best place i can be having time with you my schedule is tight and this happens and that happens but you teach me how to and then he will drop an idea in your heart that okay you can use your office you can use your bedroom you can use this place and then he will guide your heart as to the specific time pray to him he will guide you Libra Takumbra de Kusopahaya. We have 
and grace is coming upon your life to practice these things Ancient world in power.